SpaceX Starlink has become even more transparent with outages. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again being here. I don't have tea, but I hope you do. Hanging out, talking about space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of great stuff. Today we'll be talking about SpaceX Starlink and how they are now providing for us a detailed log of all of the outages that have been going on. So this is really big. Now you can get this through your SpaceX Starlink app. If you currently have the app, just go into the store. It doesn't matter if it's the iPhone um, store, your Apple store or Android or whatever, download the latest app and you're gonna see it. So this is really, really good information because it answers a lot of the questions that many of you guys have. And I'm gonna get into that in this video. We have some portions here and there of some articles I threw together to give you kind of a broad scope of what is going on. And then I'll get in a little bit detailed for you as I always do on this channel, right? So that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully you enjoy it. So the thing that I really love about this is I've been requesting this for quite some time. I wanted to not only have this type of information where we have granular, let's say, information on what the outage is, not just like it's out. Well, well, well why is it out, <laughs> right? So I've been requesting that for a long time, but also I've been requesting a means of knowing when SpaceX Starlink is down and not using down detector or some other third party. I want them to tell us. Now, are we there yet? Not yet, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. So. Without further ado, let's jump into this article. It starts out by saying, Starlink's event log, a new window into connection glitches. Starlink has introduced a powerful upgrade to its mobile app, an event log that does more than just report outages. Thank God. Instead of simply letting you know if the internet is down, the app now records every network event, searching, reconnecting, signal drops, and even obstruction notices. This may sound like a minor update, but for anyone relying on SpaceX Starlink for work, gaming, or live streaming, it's a game changer. 100% the case. Previously, users were left guessing. If a Zoom call froze or a YouTube stream buffered, there was no clear explanation. With the event log, you can now see whether the dish was searching for a satellite, if a tree branch blocked the signal, or if a software hiccup on the SpaceX Starlink side caused the issue. Why SpaceX is doing this beyond transparency? This update comes after several major service hiccups. Earlier this year, SpaceX Starlink suffered a two and a half hour global outage, not because of broken satellites, but due to failure of SpaceX's internal software systems. The new error log allows both SpaceX's engineers and end users to trace how problems ripple from the satellite network down to the dish and into the home. As SpaceX Starlink grows, the expectations grow with it. Customers want reliable streaming, seamless video calls, and low latency gaming. With this new level of transparency, SpaceX Starlink users finally have the tools to understand and even anticipate where weak points in their connection might appear. How users can take advantage of the event log. For everyday subscribers, the event log offers more than just curiosity. If the connection keeps cutting out around 2 a.m. and the logs show repeated searching or obstructed states, that might point to a satellite overhead or maintenance windows. If you notice the same error during the day, it could be tied to an environmental factor like neighbor's new construction or possibly seasonal tree growth. The logs are also incredibly useful when dealing with customer support. Instead of a vague complaint like, my internet drops sometimes, <laughs> users can now submit timestamps and exact event data. Advanced users can take it even further, feeding the log into a customer's router to trigger automatic failover or bandwidth throttling during known weak periods. I'm going to get into that because that's not exactly the case. But this new visibility also exposes some persistent Starlink quirks. Brief quote, searching events, which should be harmless, could be interpreted by some routers as a full disconnect, 
kicking the user offline. Others have found SpaceX Starlink's IP geolocation inaccurate, of course, because they use CGNAT. I'll get into that also in a second. Placing them hundreds of miles away from their actual location, which can block certain services. Absolutely the case. Hardware issues can also creep in. High cable ping drop rate readings often signal faulty or oxidized cables. That is a really good point, and maybe I'll get into that also. And some users consistently report nightly connection drifts between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., likely tied to satellite reconfiguration long-term questions and challenges. The event log is a step towards true transparency, but it also highlights how complex running a global satellite network really is. SpaceX Starlink still faces hurdles with environmental obstructions, shifting satellite coverage, and the quirks of customer or consumer hardware. That is true. Yet, given users access to this raw data, not only helps them troubleshoot issues, but also builds trust, a sign SpaceX is serious about turning Starlink from a novel service into a mainstream backbone of connectivity. I should say global connectivity for sure. So this is really good information. I think that this is great, okay? This is something that I think they should have done a long time ago and I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm also requesting that they put out a means of knowing when the system goes down. I don't wanna have to use downdetector.com or some other crap third party to be able to know that SpaceX Starlink is down. I wanna use their official site. I want them to tell me. How many users are down? How long is it down for? When is it coming back up? What are they doing? More transparency. Now, let me get into that CGNAT thing I was telling you about. Yes, the reason why many times you're using SpaceX Starlink or other service providers out there and you notice that your location is not really your location. So when you go onto Google, it'll say that you're in a town like maybe 300 miles away. Well, well, you're not really there, are you? The reason being is a lot of these providers are cheap and that includes SpaceX. They use what is called CGNAT. It stands for Carrier Grade Network Address Translation, and I'm not gonna get into, I did videos on it, maybe check back here. I did videos on it. Basically, it allows SpaceX or any of these providers to take one IP address and give it to 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. It doesn't really matter because the network address translation is happening on their side. Not everyone has their own forward-facing or outward-facing IP address, which would be nice, but they don't do that. And the reason being is IPv4 is saturated. There is no more IP addresses available and they're too damn cheap to go and migrate to IPv6. That's for a whole nother video. The bottom line is that's the reason why it shows you in a different location. It will show you where your pop is or your point of presence. So when my point of presence was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm in Florida, Everyone thought that I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm not. I'm in Florida, but now I'm using a pop down here in Miami because they migrated me there, and now it makes sense. I'm in Florida, so I'm okay with that. So there is a problem. There's ways around that using VPNs and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not going to get into it, but that's what they're talking about here. So one of the biggest problems that I have with this is, yes, we do have the ability now to open up our SpaceX Starlink app on our phone, Android or iPhone, doesn't make a difference, and now look at these detailed error logs to find out exactly what's happening at any given second. It logs everything. It's an event logger, okay? So this is really, really good information, especially if you have a problem, you could write into SpaceX, put in a ticket and say, this happened and it's happening every time at 2 a.m., I don't know what the story is, blah, 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 okay? They have access to this data also. They can download it directly from your router. That is one of the requests that I'm asking of Elon and SpaceX Starlink, is that yes, by us having this information is great, but we cannot utilize it. We can't parse it. We can't use it for anything like QoS or quality of service or failover or fallback or anything like that. Whereas if they gave us the API to be able to access it or a webhook to access this data like they have, um, we would be able to use that inside one of our routers. Remember guys, I made a router using a Raspberry Pi. Okay, I use two different pieces of software. I put it together. I got three networks coming into it. When I do all of my JC Lives, or if you take a look at any of my live stuff, it's all going through three different networks. It's going through T-Mobile, it's going through Fiber, and it's also going through SpaceX Starlink. Well, 
If I had access, once again, through an API or a web hook, I can now take that data, that real-time data, when there's problems, and say, okay, I see a problem happening. Let's go ahead and fall back to, let's say, T-Mobile. Or let's fall back to fiber instead of using SpaceX currently because there is a problem that seems to be getting worse and worse over time because it is an event logger. It's telling you what's going on. So this could be very, very helpful for anyone that's more of a pro user to be able to automate, let's say, the movement between networks. And there's a lot, there's a ton of other things that we can do with this. The problem is the SpaceX Starlink does not give us the API, nor does it give us a web hook to be able to get the information. Right. We could just get it from our phone. Now, is there a way to use it off your phone? Yeah. I mean, you could scrape the screen. You could do all kinds of other stuff. But technically, there's really not. Can we build something? Yes, but I'm not going to do that. They just need to fix it. So in my personal opinion, this is great. And for normal users out there, this is highly valuable, guys, highly valuable. One of the things that I absolutely love about this, and I told you I was going to circle back to, was that cable ping dropout rate. That is amazing, guys. I can't tell you how many people have come back to me and said, listen, Joe, thank you for telling me to replace that cable. I replaced it, and now my speeds are four times faster. You're welcome. Once again, that has to do with like oxidation to the cable, some type of faulty cable, maybe it got nicked, maybe whatever, weather got to it, whatever the case is. But now that we have data that includes cable ping drop rate, that's awesome. Now you know if it's a cable problem or some other problem. We didn't have that access before. This type of stuff is absolutely invaluable and I thank SpaceX for the information. Once again, do I want more? Of course I want more. Because I'm more of a power user, I'm a system administrator, I will write software to use the hell out of this. And literally you make this Raspberry Pi into like the absolute cracked out router for Starlink and for other services too. Whereas right now we do not have that ability because we have to use the app on our phone. Regardless, thank you SpaceX for giving us that information. Thank you for being more transparent. I think that's great. Also move that transparency into the downdetector.com-ish type of thing where you provide us with the down information and how long it's gonna be and how long has it been out and how many users are affected and how many regions and where the regions are and so on and so forth. That would be awesome instead of us using down detector or any other third party. More transparency builds trust. And for me, I think SpaceX Starlink is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And that's why I do these videos. I have, matter of fact, about 560, 570 videos just on SpaceX Starlink. And if you want to take a look at those, I'll put a link over here. Check them out. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, throw the video a thumbs up throw the channel a thumbs up. <laughs> share the channel, share the video with your friends, family, colleagues, whoever. That would be very helpful to grow the channel. That would be awesome. Also, if you want to give back, I would appreciate that. There's a little thanks button down there. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't stopped by over at jchristina.com, you can go to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Check out my merch. If there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.